Now that we understand what risks are and the Scrum approach to risk management, let's discuss in detail how to implement risk management in a Scrum project. Risk Management Procedure Risk management consists of five steps. They are risk identification, risk assessment, risk prioritization, risk mitigation, and risk communication. In this procedure, first four steps are sequential, whereas the fifth step runs in parallel with other steps. For example, when the Scrum team members identify a risk, they communicate it to the Scrum Master, and then the risk will be assessed, after which there will be another communication regarding the results of the assessment. Now let's look at the first step, risk identification. This step involves recognizing all the threats and opportunities that the project might be exposed to. As part of this step, the Scrum team members should attempt to identify potential uncertain events that could affect the project. This step is iterative in nature and is carried out throughout the life of the project. To ensure value-based prioritization and iterative development, all the risks that are identified become inputs to several Scrum processes, including create prioritized product backlog, groom prioritized product backlog, and demonstrate and validate sprint. Risk identification tools and techniques. Now let's discuss how to identify risks. The techniques that can be used by the Scrum core team to identify risks are 1. Review of lessons. One of the most common techniques to identify risks is review of lessons. The Scrum team should not only review lessons from previous projects, but also from sprints in the same project in order to identify uncertainties that could affect the project. At the end of the project, it is also important to forward lessons from the current project to corporate management so that these lessons can be applied in future projects. Two most important processes used in Scrum projects to identify and review lessons are Retrospect Sprint and Retrospect Project. Two, Risk Checklist. Another tool that can be used to identify risks is Risk Checklist. Risk checklists generally contain the risks or categories of risks that are common to a particular type of project. For example, some of the common risks associated with a software development project are required skills may not be available, new solution may not be compatible with the current standard processes, etc. Following is a template of risk checklist. 3. Risk prompts lists. The major difference between risk checklists and risk prompt lists is that risk checklists contain the actual risks that the project may be exposed to, whereas risk prompts lists are used to stimulate thoughts regarding the source from which risks may originate. A particular risk may have multiple sources, and identifying these sources enables the Scrum team to accurately estimate the probability and proximity of that particular risk. 4. Brainstorming. In brainstorming sessions, relevant stakeholders and members of the Scrum Core team openly discuss and share knowledge on the project which can be used to identify risks to the project. Brainstorming sessions are normally conducted by a facilitator. 5. Risk Breakdown Structure, RBS. Another key tool used to identify risks is Risk Breakdown Structure. In this structure, all identified project risks are categorized based on commonalities. For example, risks may be categorized as financial, technical, or safety related. This allows the team to plan for and address each risk. The following is a generic template for RBS. 6. Risk-Based Spike A risk-based spike is an experiment that involves prototyping the project on hand to better understand potential risks. In a spike, an intense two- to three-day exercise is conducted to help the team determine the uncertainties that could affect the project. For example, if you're exploring a new combination of a drug, then a spike can be conducted at the beginning of the project, before the develop epics or create prioritized product backlog processes are applied to understand the potential risks for the project better. Risk-based spikes are useful when the Scrum team is working with and getting accustomed to new technologies or tools or when user stories are lengthy. They also help in estimating time and effort more accurately. Next step in the risk management procedure is risk assessment. The primary aim of risk assessment is to enable the Scrum core team to determine the net effect of the identified risks on the expected business value from the project. 
If the risk impact is significant enough to outweigh the business justification, a decision must be made whether to continue with the project or not. Risk assessment will also help the Scrum team to prioritize risks and plan mitigation actions to address high priority risks. The assessment of risks is done to understand the risk's probability, proximity, and impact. Probability of risks refers to the likelihood of the risks occurring, the chance of the risk occurring, whereas proximity refers to when the risk might occur, the time. Impact refers to the probable effect of the risks on the project and the organizations involved. To estimate the probability of risks, techniques such as probability trees, Pareto analysis, and probability and impact matrix can be used. And to assess the net effect of identified risks on project or organization, various tools and techniques such as risk models and expected monetary value can be used. Now let's look at some of these tools and techniques in detail. Risk assessment techniques. One, risk meeting. One of the most common techniques to assess risks is risk meeting. The product owner can call a meeting of the Scrum core team and can also, optionally, invite relevant stakeholders to the meeting. In the meeting, the team will prioritize identified risks for mitigation action based on their assessment of the risk's probability, proximity, and impact on project objectives. Two, probability trees. Probability trees are used to present each risk with its probable causes and effects on the achievement of project objectives. The probability of each possible outcome is indicated in the appropriate branch and then multiplied by its assessed impact to get an expected value for each outcome possibility. The outcome values are then summed together to calculate the overall expected impact of a risk to a project. This is shown in the following diagram. 3. Pareto Analysis Pareto analysis involves ranking risks on the basis of their impact on the project. The Scrum team can estimate the importance of each risk and address the most important risk. For example, in the following figure, risk 1 has the highest impact and should preferably be addressed first. 4. Probability Impact Grid It is a technique in which each risk is assessed for its probability and impact. Generally, numerical ratings are assigned to the probability and impact of the identified risks and probability and impact values of each risk are multiplied to derive the severity value of that risk. Once all the identified risks have severity values, they are ranked hierarchically. The method of assigning probability and impact values to risks varies depending on the project and number of risks being evaluated as well as existing organizational processes and procedures. However, by applying the simple P, probability, times I, impact formula, risk severity can be calculated on a numerical or categorical scale. For example, the severity score for a risk with the probability of 50% and an impact rating of 0.6 would be calculated as follows. 0.5 probability times 0.6 impact equals 0.3. 5. Expected Monetary Value, EMV Expected Monetary Value, EMV, of a risk is calculated by multiplying the monetary impact of the risk with its probability as approximated by the customer. Expected Monetary Value equals risk impact in dollars times risk probability as a percentage. For example, a risk with an estimated negative impact of $1,000 and a 50% probability of occurring would estimate in an EMV as follows. EMV equals $1,000 times 0.50 equals 